Alright, breaking down my April iteration of the useful, usable, useless tier list. And I'm going to be touching on the criteria that I'm using to do the tiering. Very quickly, the criteria has not changed. And I'm also going to be talking about the intent behind the tier list a bit. Uh, just to just to clarify some, some stuff regarding it. Alright, so with the criteria that I use when it comes to tiering the champions, I have a, a three tier system where uh, I classify the champions in the useful tier, usable tier, and useless tier. I do this by basically classifying them using meta-relevant pieces of utility. So if a champion is the best or one of the best at one or more meta-relevant meta -relevant piece of utility, they end up being in the useful tier. And they should also be you know, uh, accompanied by a practical setup, a reasonable ramp up if they are to be you know, considered useful. So if a champion has potential in, in, a, in an offensive piece of utility and they're one of the best at it, but they also require a, a non-useful synergy team, they would not be placed in here. And when it comes to bonus points, if a champion is on top of the usable tier and maybe on the verge of becoming useful, if they have access to significantly above average DPS or sustainability, they get bumped up. If they have access to immunities, they can get bumped up. And for the usable tier, kind of the same thing, but instead of being the best or one of the best, this is just about the average champions or about the champions that are the best at a niche piece of utility. So if a champion can do some, some random niche thing really, really well, they end up being placed in the usable tier. Again, if a champion is in the useless tier and they have high DPS or high sustainability, they get bumped up. If they have immunities, they have a chance to get bumped up. And for the useless tier, these are the characters that are above, that are under average, that are below average when it comes to uh, most meta relevant pieces of utility and also champions that are about average when it comes to niche pieces of utility. So it just kind of tears down like that. And when it comes to the intent behind this list and some stuff, some of the, the comments that I've gotten before uh, saying that there are too many champions in the useful tier, too many champions in the usable tier, the, the intent behind this list isn't to make a, a bell curve shaped uh, tier list that, that contains most of the characters in the usable tier and fewer of the champions in the useless tier and the fewer of the champions in the useful tier. Um, it's not really that, it's to focus on different pieces of utility and actually give the players who are looking at the list a good idea on the surface level whether or not the champion is worth you know looking into worth spending time to to learn about worth learning their kit or worth ranking up just just the general you know breakdown of the characters in that sense and my my goal and my my end goal with this is for every champion in the game to be in the useful tier, to be honest. And I think Kabam's goal is also that by you know buffing the characters and giving them useful abilities that ends up making them relevant to the meta of the, of the game. So I would not be complaining in two years if, if all the characters in the game are in the useful tier. But I still highly doubt that's gonna happen because you know Kabam is gonna continue releasing subpar champions. Kabam is gonna, is gonna continue releasing subpar champion reworks. So I, I doubt that's gonna happen but if it does, I would be not complaining at all. All right, moving on to the April list. And we're going to be going class by class, touching on the changes and just breaking down the whole list. Uh, there's going to be changes. There's going to be demotions, promotions, and also new additions. The new additions this month are going to be Odin and also Jabari Panther. The, the embargo for Civil Centurion has not hit yet, so we can't really talk about him. But before we get started, let's, t let's uh, point your attention to the, the legend of the map, basically breaking down what's the, the little corners of, of every portrait or of every champion portrait, portrait. So on the top left corner, if the purple little triangle is there, it means that the champion significantly benefits from having their awakened ability. Bottom left corner, uh, it means that the champion is gonna be significantly benefiting from having high sig or max sig level. Uh, again, this is just to have the champion be placed where they are placed in the map. So if a champion has this, it probably means that they benefit significantly from having, uh, having being at high sig to be placed where they are. 
on the top right corner there is the, the triangle for ramp up required so like for example Aegon will be getting this uh, the bottom right corner is the triangle for synergy team so if a champion is significantly better with a, with a particular synergy or a whole synergy team they're going to be getting this and keep in mind if a champion is for example in the useful tier and they have this little square down there it probably means that the synergy members are either in the useful tier or in the usable, usable tier and you know basically they're justified <laughs> in in being in the useful tier all right let's talk about each class one by one science has not seen much changes at all except for immortal hulk being moved up because of the cav eq he's one of the best in terms of the cav eq uh, the science quest this zoom was way too much let's zoom out again Okay, so yeah, Immortal Hulk did get moved up for the KVQ. He's one of the best for the KVQ Science Quest. I do put a lot of value in the KVQ Science Quest, uh, basically KVQ EQ in general. So he did get moved up. And regular Hulk also got moved up because of how amazing he can be for the KVQ Science Quest. Uh, with the caveat of bringing in the Silver Surface Synergy. And uh, yeah, I think that's just a, that's just a good enough reason to, to move those up. Immortal Hulk, again, needs a buff still, but... Uh, in my eyes, that's good enough reason for him to be useful. All right, the rest of the class, though, nothing has really changed much. For the skill class, we have had a new addition in Jabari Panther, and we have also had a buff in Crossbones. Crossbones was already in the useful tier before the buff, and now I kind of just moved him up to the top of the useful tier. I don't do in class rank in tier rankings. So this is just for just for fun, just moving him up because he's pretty cool, pretty amazing stuff. And Jabari Panther did get placed in the useful tier because of how amazing her cleanse mechanic is. That alone would be would be reason enough to to place her there, in my opinion. The mechanic is is kind of busted. I love it. It's pretty great. The rest of the class, though, it has remained mostly the same. Looking forward to OG Black Panther's buff next month. So yeah. That's, that's just something to look forward to. And moving on to the mutant class. The mutant class is probably the most top heavy class and it's probably gonna be the class that's gonna make me redesign this whole tier list because they can't fit in there. So the mutant class has seen a, a couple of changes. I think actually one main change in Storm Pyramid X being moved up. Storm Pyramid X got moved up because of Jabari Panther actually because Storm Pyramid X happens to uh, counter Jabari Panther pretty well with her passive stun and that's something that even like uh, Apocalypse can't do. Apocalypse can't reduce Jabari Panther's uh, tenacity chance, the, the purification chance, so in this case Storm Pyramid X has moved up for that reason and also we have moved this fella, man that zoom is way too much, this fella Omega Red down in the bottom in the corner of shame uh, this is where we place some OP characters. In my eyes, Omega Red is not that OP, but I also use him a, a little too much in Alliance Wars, so that's why he got placed down there. You know, you can disagree with that decision uh, all you want, but that's kind of my call. That's kind of just a for fun thing, uh, the Corner of Shame. It is what it is. Of course, Omega Red is going to be in the useful tier in the mutant class. There was discussions about Domino, like there's always discussions about Domino, but uh, I still like her and she got a kind of a pseudo buff last month with the with the buff to uh, Masakri. So I think she, she deserves the spot where she's at. I'm keeping an eye on Jubilee, but I don't think she has impressed me enough yet. And also the class is way too top heavy. So uh, that's probably that's probably the reason why she is in the usable tier in the first place. And moving on to the Cosmic class, the only class that I have some, some you know, semblance of in tier rankings. And in the Cosmic class, I have classified the useful tier of the class to a bottom half and, a, and a, to a top half and a bottom half. The top half, the seven champions in there, uh, in my opinion, are kind of significantly above the champions in the bottom half. But the champions in the bottom half still are significantly above the champions that are in the usable tier and there has been some promotions in this class mainly hella speaking so hella moved up from being in the usable tier to the useful tier 
in my opinion she has very little utility but damage is also utility and having the highest damage output in the game by far just place her firmly in the useful tier for sure and that's because of the odin synergy that's why she has a little synergy icon on her on her portrait speaking of odin he was the new addition in this iteration of the tier list and he is placed firmly in the usable tier uh, I think I value Odin as much as I value Heimdall because they both kind of have access to an indefinite true strike. So in this case, I think that's a, that's a good enough ranking for him. It's kind of sad with, you know, how powerful Odin is supposed to be, I suppose. But, uh, you know, he is at least doing something for Hala, right? So moving down in the useless tier of the Cosmic class, I actually moved Super Scroll down in the useful, useless tier. I think he's decent. I really enjoy playing him, but there is absolutely nothing that he's the best, near the best, or even above average at, in my opinion. So that's kind of where he's lying at the moment. There's there's no redeeming factor about him, just like with Airwalker, just like with Nova, who happens to have gotten, I'm not sure what to call it, a, a buff? Three lines of change, a, a, the laziest buff in the world. So Nova got a buff. And it basically took him from a champion that required high sig and maybe some some synergy members, some impractical cosmic buff extending synergy members to to be practical and also high damaging to a champion who requires the exact same things. So he's just where he's at and nothing changed about him. The buff was pretty trash and Kabam should be, uh, you know, taking a second look at him at some point maybe. You know, give him some utility, give him uh, a bit more of a practical damage rotation, and yeah, he's just he's just pretty awful. And I did a whole video about how to fix him, so you know that's my suggestions about Nova, and he's pretty trash. All right, moving on to the tech tier. The tech tier saw the corner of shame, um, you know, champion last month with Ghost, and she has reverted back to her place in the useful tier. And it has only that also saw the the buff to Howard the Duck. So Howard the Duck has gone from being useless to being completely useful. She uh, he has a, a lot of different mechanics that can be considered useful. I think he has one of the best armor breaks in the game, just as a sense of how easy this how easy it can be to stack them, especially with the auto masher on. And he has amazing access to to fury gains a pretty good heal block off the sp1 his awakened ability is is kind of interesting but not necessarily required so that's that's also giving him another point and howard the duck is only going to get better when his synergies get updated with the tiger synergy and the man thing synergy both increasing his damage output and also increasing his utility off the sp2 with the suppression all right the rest of the tech class though has remained mostly unchanged i still feel sad about psycho man uh, even with a synergy i just don't think he is uh, really justified to be in the tier above and moving on to the last tier the mystic tier the mystic class not the tier uh, the mystic class has seen some changes as well and uh, we saw a demotion for mangog mangog uh, i think after some of the shine of him wore off he kind of feels like a lot of a, a lot worse of a version of Dragon Man in a lot of senses. Basically, when it comes to the unstoppable mechanic, when it comes to sustainability, uh, the immunities, and, and all that, he's just so much worse than Dragon Man, so much less practical than Dragon Man. And when it comes to just having buff control, having the stagger mechanic, there is. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a shortage of buff control up above in in the mystic cha mystic uh class so in his case he's uh he's stuck in the usable tier for now at least maybe maybe he's gonna get a synergy at some point to to push him up a tier but yeah that's that's kind of about it for for the usable tier of the mystic class jane foster got booted down to the useless tier i know she's the best at i don't know the, the grandmaster fight I guess she's one of the best but that's just one fight in the game and maybe she's you know that's extremely extremely niche so i don't think she's gonna be 
uh, justifying her move to the, the usable tier just because of that one fight. Uh, she has gotten a synergy recently with the Silver Centurion. We'll see how that synergy impacts her. Maybe it'll move her up, maybe it won't. But yeah, that's kind of about it from this tier list. And again, one more time. The goal of this tier list is to have every champion in the game be placed in the useful tier. And maybe when that's closer to reality, I'm going to have uh, in-tier rankings for the useful tier. So... People can see, you know, why each one of these champions uh, is useful. But until then, I'm just going to continue doing the, t the tier list as I have been. Just continue to move up champions, move down champions for different reasons. And probably going to stick to the same criteria. If you have any suggestions about the tier list, any comments, or any suggestions about the, the criteria, I uh, would be happy to hear. But yeah, that's about it from the list of the month of April. Thanks all for watching. And I'll catch you all later. Bye!